Antioxidants are a hot topic nowadays and we have another one that is increasing in popularity and that is astaxanthin. Anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-death. Lots of buzzwords being thrown around with supplements these days, but what we really care about is if they work and if we should take them. In this video, we'll take a look at astaxanthin and if it's worth the hype. First, we need to understand what the oxidants and free radicals are to even care about stopping them with the power, power of antioxidants. antioxidants. A quick Google search tells us that a reactive oxidative species, which is another word for an oxidant, is a type of unstable molecule that contains oxygen and that easily reacts with other molecules in a cell. A buildup of the reactive oxygen species in cells may cause damage to DNA, RNA, and proteins, and may cause cell death. Reactive oxygen species are free radicals. So if you hear me say oxidant, or free radical, or reactive oxidative species, they're all the same, so don't get confused. But still, why do we care? Our oxygen levels increase as we age and antioxidant levels decrease as we age. So theoretically, it makes sense to swallow 10 bottles of this stuff daily. But before we jump the gun and load up, we still want a perfect balance of oxidants to antioxidants and sometimes oxidants on their own causing stress is a good thing. For example, when we exercise and we all exercise, right? Absolutely, I do. When we exercise, we release oxidants and stress our body, but that is a good kind of stress and helps our body become more efficient. That helps extend our life and health span. This signals to our cells that they have to become more efficient. Work smarter, not harder. Problem is, when we get older, those free radicals go rogue and don't only let loose during times of stress. So we need to tame them. Problem is, we have less antioxidant levels as we age. That's why supplementation with antioxidants has become so popular. In comes astaxanthin. It is an antioxidant. It is an anti-inflammatory. There are those buzzwords again. But it can also help with eye health, like cataracts and age-related macular degeneration. But those are not the buzzwords we're looking for, so we'll stick to antioxidant. So as an antioxidant, it is 10 times more powerful than beta-carotene, which is vitamin A. 100 to 500 more times powerful than alpha tocopherol, which is vitamin E, and a thousand times more powerful than ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. However, the most powerful antioxidant in the body is still glutathione. So let's not jump the gun here. Some other info about astaxanthin is that it is fat soluble, similar to vitamin D, which means if you do decide to take this supplement, you should take it with fat, not that kind of fat. I mean in a soft gel form with oil in it or with a tablespoon of oil or some food or drink with fat in it so that it gets absorbed. Foods high in astaxanthin include salmon, trout, krill, shrimp, so fish. You know what else fatty fish is good for? Omega-3s. Antioxidants like vitamin A, vitamin E, and C are good for skin health. So would astaxanthin be good for it as well? A study here on astaxanthin for skin health showed that overall there is some clinical data to support the benefits of astaxanthin supplementation in the range of 3 to 6 milligrams per day on skin health, especially for photo-aged skin. So should we take astaxanthin? Answer is it probably depends. I don't currently see any evidence in taking astaxanthin for healthy young adults because there aren't any proven clinical benefit. As we can see from this graph as well, that oxidative stress levels don't really start to creep up on us until we hit our 40s. And for those over 45 years old, I would actually recommend a different product, Glynac. As you can see from the same graph, oxidative stress levels increase, but glutathione levels, which is a king of antioxidants, decreases. So it makes sense to increase those levels. Glycine and N-acetylcysteine are precursors to making glutathione. We don't normally recommend taking glutathione directly because the body doesn't absorb it that well and it can potentially cause more harm as the body wouldn't have any way to regulate its antioxidant levels. Since glynac is a precursor, the body will decide how much glutathione it wants to make and so the risk of having too many antioxidants roaming around in the blood and causing problems is small. Similar thing with astaxanthin. It is a potent antioxidant itself, like giving straight glutathione. So there is a greater risk of causing harm. There may be a reason to take astaxanthin as people get older, above 60 years old, for example, but for a young person, for sure less than 50 years old, I wouldn't recommend astaxanthin at this current time as the evidence is not really showing any positive benefits. Something to keep in mind when taking any antioxidant, not just astaxanthin, is blocking the effects of exercise. We're all exercising, right? Absolutely, I do. Since I mentioned earlier that exercise releases oxidants and stresses the body in a good way so that it become more efficient, if you have a large supply of antioxidants like astaxanthin, glutathione, vitamin A, E, or C, 
you can potentially blunt those long-term positive effects. But if you do decide that astaxanthin is right for you, let's go over the dosing. The usual dose is four milligrams, but the FDA approves doses as high as 12 milligrams. Anytime you take any supplement, always speak with your healthcare provider and always start with a lower dose first and work your way up if necessary. For side effects, generally it's a pretty safe supplement, but increased bowel movements or stomach pain may happen if you take too much. So again, don't go overboard. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time.